crazy thing about that too, I never forget, man, on Wednesday meeting, Coach said, when it's a dying moment, they will try to burn the house down. Mm. And he goes everybody to that moment. I, I can't remember if it was third down, yeah. but it was a waiting moment to yeah. where they tried to burn the house down. They brought everybody. <laughs> and we called them. Now, I get it. And I know that tendencies are a real thing when it comes to football. Coaches look at film all the time to see, all right, what does this team like to do in this situation? What does this team not like to do when this is the circumstances? So I get that. And, and teams pick up on tendencies so they can gain an advantage. But I think with what Patrick Peterson said, what what he even sort of exposed with the Baltimore Ravens, it was not anything new. But I think where a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans' current frustration lies right now with this team is that they keep doing the same thing and losing in the same way over and over and over and over. And this is not a new issue. This has been an issue for years. For, for, for a long time right now um, With the Baltimore Ravens Even if you just look at the two losses this year What were two things that happened In both of those losses That were huge Well number one uh, The offense Offense just couldn't get it together They were just lackluster uh, There were a lot of fumbles uh, The turnovers and whatnot. It just Offense wasn't on point Now uh, When it comes to the turnovers What can those be blamed on uh, Obviously with the fumbles Those are the players because uh, the players got to hold on to the ball. They need to secure the ball. And whether it comes to Lamar Jackson fumbling, whether it comes to the offensive line not blocking and then them getting easy knockouts of Lamar Jackson, whether it comes to a running back uh, not holding on to the ball and that completely shifting momentum, whatever it is, the, the players, they need to hold on to the ball. I know a lot of people can be like, well, look, they not prepared. They're not properly prepared. And they can feel like that leads back to coaching. Why are the Baltimore Ravens as a team – Fumbling the ball so much It's not just one player It's not just two players But it's a lot of players That they just keep on Dropping this ball And they've been doing it So consistently So some people feel like There's a lack of preparation Now another thing that happens In the, the two losses so far Is there's a bis, big miscommunication uh, Between coaching and players In this game uh, against the Steelers It was fourth and two And the Baltimore Ravens It was looking like Oh they about to go for it Okay Ain't got no problem with it But okay okay, Let's see where this goes And Tyler Linderbaum He decided You know what Hey the the plan was To run the clock down And kick the field goal But Tyler Linderbaum was like You know what I got this Watch this y'all He tried to get the Steelers To jump off sides It obviously failed But Lamar Jackson Wasn't expecting a snap Zay Flowers wasn't expecting a snap They tried to make something Out of literally nothing uh, And obviously nothing was made So failed fourth down conversion Points off the board Failed play Uh, But that miscommunication right there Uh, Harbaugh told them one thing They were planning on doing one thing But the players decided to do another thing What's that about? So that was one thing And then in the Colts game Another big miscommunication was right before the two-minute warning toward the end of the game. Uh, you literally just got a safety, so you've been handed two points. So the clock says 2.03. For some reason, somehow, the, the, the Ravens thought that the clock said to, it was at two minutes. Uh, then they told Zay, hey, Zay Flowers, just call it a fair catch. That's all you got to do. But the clock said 2.03, and Zay Flowers called a fair catch. Uh, And that three seconds that was left on there, that gave the Colts just enough time, all the time that they needed, and it took away a lot of time from the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, So that was a big game changer right there, because essentially I I thought the game was over. A lot of us thought the game was over, like, oh, man, Ravens defense, they forced a safety. Gardner Minshew stepped out of bounds. He did a Dan Ovlosky. All right, let's go. And we getting the ball back to – oh, yeah, we straight – nope, we sure weren't. So I know with a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans, the issue is just a lot of the same things continuing to be repeated. Um, So it's very important that and and everything, in my opinion, starts with John Harbaugh because he is the head coach of this team. Not to say that everything falls on him because the players still got to play. The players are the ones that got to play. The players are the ones that got to execute. Um, But everything in the beginning, it starts with him. So it's important. Even like I was just talking to my guy, JT, the other day. And he talked about how he just felt like with with, with John Harbaugh, the the mentality of the game, that's where the the, the psychological part of the game, that's where John Harbaugh seems to be lacking. And he said he almost felt like like, uh, the Steelers, they were even starting to play mind games in the media bit with the Ravens, and it worked. 
Because he talked about with Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin before the game. Y'all remember Mike Tomlin talking about Zay Flowers? Oh, he was big and Zay Flowers up big time. He was like, oh, yeah, he can do this, he can do that. And while everything he said was true, that's still a psychological part of the game. So he feel like Mike Tomlin, he knew what he was doing. And John Harbaugh and them, they, they took the bait. They took the base. So like, oh yeah, oh they, that's how you feel about us. Okay, cool. And then look how everybody executed. <laughs> got all, not that that's a, that's an excuse, but again, like we always talk about, the mental part of the game is just as important, even more important than the physical part of the game. But anyway, uh, where a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans' frustration lies is just in the things that continue to happen over and over. Now with Patrick Peterson, what he said. With him sort of exposing uh, the Baltimore Ravens, even though, again, this is not any new information. This is not anything that's great. This is things that a lot of Ravens fans have been talking about for the longest. I, I think where the issue lies with that, especially with what he said, um, is that it happened in a division game. That's the biggest problem with that. It happened in a division game. And when it, in a division game, this is an opponent that you play at least two times a year. Sometimes it could be three, but you are guaranteed to play this opponent at least two times a year, every single year. So if you get caught doing the same thing, they, they know you a lot more than all these other teams will know you because hey, they're in your division. Y'all are family. Y'all are brothers. Y'all are fighting brothers, but y'all are brothers. So they know your tendencies. They know what you like to do. They know what you don't like to do. So it's very important. It's extra important that in those games, you don't be so predictable. And it seems as if I, I, I remember uh, earlier, um, well, last year, when well no no this year first when it came out that in the last uh, six game before this past Steelers game that it came out that the Ravens in the last six game they were one and five against the Steelers I was like what is that true is that accurate we really one and five in the last what and so I had to look it up and I saw again Steelers January first twenty twenty three Steelers beat the Ravens sixteen thirteen December eleventh twenty twenty two Ravens beat them sixteen fourteen. But the game before that, Steelers 16-13. The game before that, Steelers 2019. The game before that, Steelers 1914. The game before that, Steelers 28-24. Now the game before that, it was Ravens 28-10. Uh, so that was nice, but that was December 29, 2019. And we all remember that year. Uh, but anyway, the Steelers have been doing their thing against the Baltimore Ravens. And and all of, all of these wins that the Steelers have been getting over the Baltimore Ravens, and now now some of the games Lamar Jackson was out, so got to give them that. But in a lot of those games, one play, one play can decide everything. And it could be a clutch play. It can be a play in the second quarter, the third. It, it, the games are so close. So that just shows like, all right, which team is going to be the one to really take this thing over the top? Which team is going to be the one to make that play? Which coach is going to be the one that's extra prepared, that's overly prepared for this game? Because, again, it's all about tendencies, right? That's what we talked about. That's what Patrick Peterson talked about. He talked about tendencies. Mike Tomlin, um, I think it was last year, he talked about how with the Baltimore Ravens, they are very analytics-driven. We all know they're analytics-driven, but – uh, when it came to them going for two point conversion, Mike Tomlin brought it out. He said he, he knew they were gonna go for it because they they go by the analytics. They heavy with the analytics, so he knew what to expect. So with him knowing what to expect, in my opinion, it's important that you you switch it up a bit. Because again, a division opponent that that's that's big time right there. Again, you play these guys twice a year. Now I think another part of fans' frustration, like we talked about before, is just the Ravens being repeat offenders. Uh, we've been talking about this for, for years, years, that uh, usually every year, without fail, uh, the Ravens will lose at least two games. They'll let two games drop due to just poor decisions. It'll be coaching staff decisions, um, the lack of preparation, just the, the, them being just mentally lacking. They would just drop two games due to not, not even because they, they a banged up team, not because they hurt anything like that, but just it'll be silly stuff. And it happens every single year without fail. I think Ravens fans are just tired of that. That's why you've been hearing a lot of Ravens fans talk about recently, oh, fire Harbaugh, fire Harbaugh. This is not a, a new conversation that Ravens fans have been having. A lot of Ravens fans have been having this conversation for years. Now, I'm not here to tell you, oh, yeah, fire Harbaugh, fire Harbaugh. What I do like is that right now the Ravens are 3-2. and two. So it could be worse, could be better, but the Ravens are 3-2. and two. That's who they are. But I think right now, I'm not saying fire Harbaugh, but what I am saying is that it's very important that they get a grip. It's very important that they fix these issues now 
because it's still early. It's still early in the season. But we're not going to be having the same conversation. We don't want to be having the same conversation in a couple weeks from now. Like, oh, man, Ravens still doing the same stuff. Oh, Ravens still got the same issues. Because if you listen to Ravens fans' complaints for years, uh, it's a lot of the same thing. Oh, man, this offense. What is going on with this offense? Oh, man, this offense is terrible. Why they can't convert? Why they not scoring? Why they not putting up points? Oh, man, we got this player, that player. What is going on with our offense? Why are they so inconsistent? Same thing being said for years. Defense, been, hey, defense been doing their thing for the most part. There have been some, like, fourth quarter blunders and whatnot. But then again, if the offense would do their part, hey, that make the defense job. Because usually the defense for three, three and a half quarters, defense will be playing their hearts out for the most part, m most of the time. Usually the defense, they got it. But it's the offense where that's the biggest question. Well, we've done been through all these different offensive coordinators and whatnot, and it's been the same issue. Now with Todd Monkin, I ain't tripping off Todd Monkin right now because even in this last game, he was calling a good game for the most part, but the receivers were just dropping it. They were just straight up dropping it. It's like, man, what is that? So I can't put the, the drops on coaching. I know a lot of people brought up the whole rugby ball thing, but it's like with the rugby ball thing, haven't they been doing that all season? And they ain't, they ain't been having drop issues all season. So this rugby ball thing ain't just come out of nowhere. It ain't just come out of the blue. So with, with the whole, everybody making a big deal of the rugby ball thing, I think that that's a big part of the media because the media, they brought that up. They brought, they're like, oh, you need to toss that rugby ball out. They've been doing that. That, that. that ain't nothing new. So what? The, it's all of a sudden an issue now when they have all the drops, but it wasn't an issue the, the previous four weeks. But anyway, another conversation for another day. Um, but Ravens fans are just, they're just tired. They are tired of the same stuff, but the Baltimore Ravens, since it is still early enough in the season, they have an opportunity to turn this around. Uh, with John Harbaugh, uh, he has a big opportunity moving forward just to adapt. Um, you you don't want to be complacent. You don't want to be content with who you've been for all these years. You want to be better. You want to do more. And we saw the Ravens this offseason. We saw them taking a different, a much different approach. We, we wish they would have taken this approach years ago when Lamar was still on his rookie contract. We were like, oh, okay, well, better late than never. But they, they take, took a completely different approach to this offseason. And I loved it. I, I, I loved it. And I still think there's some more that could be done and that will be done as far as the roster. But they, the way that they attacked this thing, I said, whoa, okay, whoa, who are these Ravens? But it's important that we ask that same question moving forward. Who are these Ravens uh, in a good way? Because we know who the Ravens have been. We know who the Ravens are, but we know who, they, who we want them to be. And if they can just move forward, get with the times, adapt, adjust a little better here and there, then they can be a much better team, a much more successful team, and a team that will just stop beating themselves.